Did you know your system could fend off hackers while you sip your coffee? Whether you are a home user, safeguarding family photos, a developer creating the next big thing, or a sysadmin protecting critical data, it's eLinux is your unsung hero. Welcome to my channel. Today we are diving into OpenSUSE Micro OS, a game-changing Linux operating system designed for security, stability, and simplicity. Together we will explore how to master this immutable system and unlock the power of SE Linux step by step even if you have never heard of it before. Let's get started. OpenSUSE Micro OS is a cutting edge Linux OS built for immutable infrastructure with a read only root file system, transactional updates and SE Linux security it is perfect for maintaining a stable and secure environment. Based on the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed ruling release, MicroOS receives frequent updates, keeping it at the forefront of Linux development. Some of key features of OpenSUSE MicroOS 1. Immutable file system, no accidental changes or corruption. 2. Ruling release, always up to date with OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. 3. It's eLinux. Advanced security to enforce strict access controls. 4. Transactional updates. Safe atomic updates with automatic rollbacks. First, what is SE Linux? SE Linux stands for Security Enhanced Linux. It is a kernel level security mechanism that applies rules to limit what applications, processes, or even users can do on your system. It works with the principle of least privilege. A process gets only the permissions it absolutely needs to do its job. If a process tries to access something it shouldn't, SE Linux blocks it and locks the attempt. Think of your home. SE Linux is like having a smart lock system where each person has a key that only opens specific doors. For instance, the cleaner's key only open the living room and kitchen. The babysitter's key only works for the living room and kids room. Even if someone gets inside, they cannot enter restricted areas without the proper key. Why use SE Linux on MicroOS? MicroOS is designed for security and stability, making it ideal for servers, IoT devices, or even home desktop users. Its immutable file system and transactional updates ensure system integrity. Adding SE Linux enhances this by preventing applications from misbehaving or becoming a gateway for attackers. Let's begin by checking if SE Linux is enabled. Open your terminal and type SE status. This command gives you the current status of SE Linux. For any reason, if it shows its eLinux status disabled, you need to check the following two file configurations for that. The first file to check is etc default grab. I ran here transactional update shell, and then I'm going to open that file. You make sure in that line that contains this variable grab cmd line linux default that has security equal is eLinux, is eLinux equal one and enforcing equal one. If you had to do any changes in that file, don't forget to run grab mkconfig to generate the new configuration for grab the bootloader. The second file to check is slash hc slash se linux slash config and make sure that is e linux equal enforcing. Once finished, run transactional update apply and then reboot your system by using system control reboot. You can temporarily change the mode using the set enforce command. sudo set enforce 0 will switch the mode to permissive. Running sudo set enforce 1 will switch back to enforcing. To make changes persistent, edit the SE Linux configuration file. You run sudo transactional update shell and then you open the file slash hc slash se linux slash config and here you can change the SE Linux option to enforcing, permissive, or disabled. 
you can save the file and then reboot. Before you reboot your system, don't forget to exit the shell and then you run transactional update apply and then you can reboot your system. Imagine you are running an Nginx web server to host your website. Without its eLinux, an attacker exploiting a vulnerability in Nginx could potentially access files they should not. Its eLinux prevents this by enforcing strict rules about what Nginx can and cannot do. SE Linux assigns security context to files and directories. Run the command ls space dash lz capital slash srv slash www. You will see output like this. In case if the type httpd underscore sys underscore content underscore t was default underscore t means it doesn't match the web server's expected context. Nginx might not have permission to access these files. To fix this, assign the httpd underscore sys underscore content underscore t context, which is required for web server content, using the command change context space dash r capital and the name of the context. Here is httpd underscore sys underscore content underscore t. This command changes the context recursively for the directory and all its files. If the system reboots, SE Linux may revert the changes. Use this command sudo se manage f context space dash a space dash t and the name of the context and the path of the folder. And after that, make sure to run restore con space dash r capital v small and the path. This ensures the context remains correct after a reboot. Finally, restart the web server to apply the changes. Now, even if an attacker compromises in Genix, its eLinux ensures they can only access files in slash srv slash www slash htdocs and nothing else. To manage se Linux policies, list existing ones with se module space dash l. Here I'm piping the output of the command to column and then list to make it easy to read. And here a list of the SE Linux policies installed on our system. To install a new policy, suppose you are running a service and SE Linux is blocking it. First, identify the denial logs by running this command. If you see denials related to the service, use audit allow to create a policy module. First, you create the policy by using this command and at the end, by convention, we create the policy started with the name of the service or the application that is Linux blocking it. And then you install the created module by running this command se module space dash i for install and the name of the module. For advanced scenarios, you can download pre-written se Linux policy templates. For example, the se Linux reference policy repository on GitHub provides examples github.com slash se linux project slash ref policy dot jet you can clone the repository and use the appropriate template for your application here is a home user scenario you download a media player that is not from a trusted source se linux can confine it to minimize risks run the media player you download for example vlc then check its se linux context by running this command ps space dash ez capital. The output might show the process running as unconfined underscore t, meaning it is unrestricted. Generate and apply a policy to confine the process using the following steps. First, you need to use transactional update command to be inside the shell in read write mode, and then you create a policy module and after that you install it. So these commands analyzes the denied action in SE Linux logs and then generates a tailored policy. Now even if the media player tries to modify system files or access private data, SE Linux blocks it. Sometimes SE Linux might block legitimate actions and you will need to debug. Let's simulate an example where SE Linux denies access to a custom script in slash opt 
slash the name of the script is custom script. First, run the script. Then check its eLinux logs for errors by running this command sudo au search dash m avc dash ts recent. The output shows which rule blocked the action. If the issue is a wrong context, restore it by run the command sudo restore con slash opt and the name of the script. For missing permissions, generate a custom policy by using these two commands. This will create and install a policy allowing the specific behavior that was blocked. SE Linux learns and adapts, letting you fine tune security. Let's talk about how to set the default kernel in OpenSUSE microOS using transactional updates. This is especially useful if you want to ensure your system boots into the LTS long term support kernel by default. Start by entering the transactional shell, sudo transactional update shell. Once inside, open the grub configuration file for editing by using your favorite text editor. Make sure the following line is not commented. If it is, remove the hash. The line that contains grub underscore default equals saved. Also, look for the line containing grub save default equal true. If it is commented, uncommented by removing the hash. These settings allow grub to save your current selection at the default boot option. Save the file and exit the editor. Next, update the grub configuration to apply the changes by using the command grub2-mkconfig. Once finished, exit the shell and don't forget to run transactional-update apply. And finally, reboot your machine. When the grub menu appears, select the LTS kernel line and boot into it. From now on, your system will remember this choice and every reboot will default to the LTS kernel. Ensuring stability and reliability for your setup. To add multimedia codecs, add the Pacman repository and install necessary packages. First, transactional update shell, and then you add the repository of Pacman, and don't forget to run transactional update apply. And then you can install the codecs you want from Pacman by specifying the argument dash dash from in the transactional update package installed. And once you hit enter, now this codec will be installed from that repository. Once the installation finished, don't forget to run transactional update apply. Here are three best practices for using SE Linux. One, always test SE Linux policies in a staging environment before deploying to production. Two, keep SE Linux logs clean address warnings or errors promptly. Three, stick to enforcing mode for maximum security. By mastering these techniques, including setting the default kernel with transactional updates, you will unlock the full potential of OpenSUSE micro OS, whether you are using it at home, in the cloud, or on edge devices. From SE Linux security to transactional updates, the possibilities are endless. With these tools, you have turned your system into a fortress. If you found this tutorial useful, hit like, share it with your friends, and subscribe for more in-depth Linux guides. Until next time, stay secure and thanks for watching.